Hi you guys, it's Kimmy with Costi and Bar. Jumping on here for our virtual um, sign making and stenciling workshop. So I'm gonna give it a few minutes. If you're watching on a replay, I'm gonna let folks join. Then I'm actually gonna join myself on my phone, I think, and see if I can do that. So when you join, let me know that you're there so that I can see you. Let's see if I can see myself. All right, there we go. For our virtual Oops. All right, so we're gonna let some folks sign on. We'll give it a few minutes while people kind of gather up and join us. Once you join in, let me know you're there. Oh, thank you for the thumbs up. And I am all settled in. Hey, hey Hillary. Oh, good that you're watching. Yours is in my car, Hillary, ready to come. Your kit is ready. So watch everything that we're doing here and that will show you guys how to do it. Um, and I'm gonna watch Weirdly enough, I'm gonna watch myself on my other phone because I realized that I, it's a weird delayed thing that's happening. Oh, hey Holly. Everybody kind of tell me where you are. Um, I don't wanna wait too, too late because I think this isn't gonna be a super short one, but I'll try not to make it too, too long. So kind of let me see who's watching. Tell me where you are. Hey, all right. So what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm gonna walk you guys through the process and I'm in here by myself. So if I, this is a good test, right? So this is a great test to make sure that we've got everything in the kits. And if we don't, I'll be fixing them tonight. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our mom sign. And in doing the mom sign, what it does is for those of you that have gotten them, thanks. And it will give you everything that you, um, need to know how to do to do this sign but because this is such a a basic hey marissa a basic kind of sign then this will give you some techniques that you can use on other projects on things at home um, so i decided not to make this one that you had to buy to get in to watch because i think you guys might enjoy doing it oh you are so welcome thanks for watching donna all right hi Aunt sue all right hey barbara hale i don't know why i say your name all in one but i say it all in one okay so tonight we're actually going to be uh making a sign if you guys watch me a lot you know that my aunt who just joined watches so i'm actually going to be making her grandmother's sign um so that i can send it to her and uh, i'll get to double dip so i'm making a present and i'm gonna do a live so what I've done, uh, when you get your kit, you're gonna have everything that I've got here. Uh, you're gonna have your two board sign. So the way that we make these in the shop, I'm just gonna give all our secrets away. Uh, we built pre-built this. Now, when we're normally open, we have a lot of new followers, so we're glad that you guys are with us. Uh, when you come into the shop, um, you, um, you guys, if you watch my last one, I also have new glasses that are bifocal, so <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where to look. Um, but this is how we build our board signs in the shop. We use wood glue and then we do these straps on the back. Uh, if you know anything about sign building, you could just use wood glue and clamp them together and leave it because it's the wood glue that really is gonna hold it together. But we figure you'd like to leave the shop sometimes, so we started using these straps. Uh, they're kind of temporary clamps, but they're kind of permanent clamps, so don't take it off. But it is the wood glue that's gonna hold it together. I put it kind of close. We tried to pick grain that, um, uh, hey to Idaho, that, that I like, to be honest. We just kind of put it together, but more than that, we tried to fit boards that fit together. Um, remember when you get your board signs that wood is wood, okay? and it's not going to be perfectly straight we don't plane the boards before we put them together uh, we this board sign has a more rustic feel to it uh, but in your kit you do have sandpaper so let's say you want it to be a little bit straighter a little less rustic on the ends a little uh, some of them may have um um, you know, kind of different cut little pieces on the ends, you can fix that with your sandpaper, okay? 
All right. So I kind of jumped into the uh, kit too soon, but you're going to have your two board sign. This is uh, seven inches by 19. So I think it's a good size to tuck on a shelf, to put on top of a door. Um, uh, hey, Iris, how are you? Gosh, I haven't talked to you in a little while. Um, so uh, it's a good size sign. And then the next thing you're going to get is your stencil. And so uh, my aunt goes by BB in Idaho. I call her a Mimi, so you're going to hear some different things. But we've got her stencil on here, and uh, <laughs> and apparently all her friends are on here too. And so what we've done, I've already weeded the stencil. So this stencil has its weeding done. That's what we call it when we take out this the letter part. And then it also has transfer tape already on it. I'm going to put this really close, and I purposely created some creases on here so that I could show you what to do with that, really what you're not gonna do anything with that. Uh, but what we use for transfer tape in the shop here is uh, just clear contact paper, to be honest with you. You could get fancy transfer tape. You could buy the transfer tape from Cricut or Silhouette. Um, I find that those are too strong. I'm gonna be honest with you, I think they're too strong. So, and the reason that I say that is like, if you, you'll watch when I apply it and take it on and off, the contact paper, you want it to do its job, which is to help transfer the whole stencil all together in one piece. But if it's too hard to pull back off, then your vinyl can rip up, you can rip the wood. Um, so I do find that the contact paper works really well. If you find that the contact paper itself, sometimes if we're doing, um, like glass etching or something like that, and we're doing something smaller, we sometimes pre, um, I don't even know what you call it, we stick it on our pants. We take the tape or the contact paper and you stick it on your pants and it makes it less tacky, okay? So you're gonna get a stencil with your transfer tape on it. I'll walk you through this in a minute. And then you're gonna get your kit. Real quick, what's in your kit? The first thing you have is in a bag is going to be your 3D names or word or saying that you did. Whatever you did that's going to go on the top of here, that's going to be in a baggie. And I'll walk through that when we get to it. Sandpaper, we mentioned. You're going to have a big foam brush. This is for doing your stain. You're going to have stain. We're giving you, I'm going to show you, this is what you get. I will show you when we're done how much is left. Uh, there's going to be a lot left. So we, we don't want you to get home and not have enough, but we also want to make sure that, um, uh, you know, you, you definitely have enough, but you're going to have more than you need is what I'm trying to say. You're going to have uh, sponges, uh, one sponge for each color and one half sponge for glue at the end. So you'll see that. You're going to have the two colors that you picked. These are paints. And when you hear some, uh, that's my phone, don't text me now because <laughs> I won't answer. Uh, so on this one, we've got a navy blue stain and we're going to do a gold BB and we're doing white letters. So that's going to be the combo that we're going to do. Um, helping her turn her living room into a navy colored room. Uh, there's a little pot, paint pot of glue. Okay, this is paint tape. I did not know if everybody would have paint tape or some kind of tape that you can use. Uh, do you get to pick your stain color? You do, you get to pick your stain color and your paint color. All of that's part of it. If uh, we had a glitch, I had somebody message me. We've put together about mm, 15 so far, just in the last couple of days. And everything was fine. I got stain colors. I knew that you picked something, and so I knew it was out there. Um, and when we, um, love you back, when we, um, I got a message today saying that for some reason they couldn't choose, they couldn't type in the color stain that they wanted. So I fixed it. Um, it's a glitch with the online store. If you find that you're not able to enter those things, you should be able to enter your stain, your font choice is a, an option, your paint colors, and the names that you need, both this name and the stencil name. So it's a full-on custom thing. Um, if you can't do all of those things, message me and I'll, I'll fix it again. I don't, I can't control squares, so I don't know what's happening, but we'll just keep fixing it. Okay, so this, 
weird thing <laughs> is paint tape on a popsicle stick. I didn't know if you'd have tape. If you've got your own paint tape, it's probably easier to use, but I didn't want you to not have something because you need tape. And then the last but not least, you're going to have an alligator hanger, sawtooth hanger. Um, there you go so that you can hang this at the end. So it's a full on kit. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And the first thing we're gonna do is apply our stain. I've had a lot of questions lately about the stain. So we did our, uh, hang on, I'm gonna jump up. I'll be right back. We did our little um, sailboat sunset the other day. Was that yesterday? <laughs> it's all a blur. Uh, I glued it together. This is what we did yesterday. The number of messages I got about my stain, um, even though you guys know we've been doing stain for since we opened, um, we, and I've got no secrets, we use Minwax stain. Um, you have to buy it in pretty big quantities. So of course we do that here. We sell it to you. Uh, this is included in the kit, but you can get this much for 250. So we're, um, we're just kind of transferring the exact same cost to you out of a convenience during this wackadoodle time. But, um, you can get it at, uh, you can get it online, you can get it at Lowe's. Um, they have lots of colors, you can get them to mix it. Uh, but it's just Minwax water-based stain. We love it. Okay, so what I've got is I've got my board sign. And when I get my board sign, I'm feeling this right now. And I like to, uh, the way I describe what I'm feeling is it feels like it's got hair, right? Um, kind of like you, you haven't shaved your legs through the whole quarantine. I love it y'all, but I haven't really done that. So, uh, each A. Type that again, Holly. I can't see it. Um, so what I'm gonna do, because I feel the hairs on here, I'm gonna give it a light sand. I'm not gonna go crazy. We've given you a pretty coarse grit because we want it to be easy. Whack a doodle. Yeah. And all I'm gonna do, I just wanna knock the kind of the rough parts off I don't if you come in here you know that I just usually just go right into it but this one was feeling a little bit hairy if you get a kit and you've got a bunch of black and yellow hair in it it's my dogs sorry about that uh, I do notice that even though we pack your kits here in the shop every now and then I'll <laughs> they're just everywhere Okay, now when you use stain, and what you also want to make sure you have, get some uh, paper towels. I have put, uh, I cut a paper bag and put it on the table tonight. Um, we've got our white paper in the shop, which is butcher paper, which is great, which you can get at like the restaurant store. I don't, if you, I guess you can't really get it in the restaurant store if you don't own a business, but if you do, go get some. Um, and, it's great because it uh, keeps it from really bleeding through, which the paper bags won't tonight, but it'll help enough. And you could use the same at home. You could put, um, hold on, let me put that right there. Let's see, can you see that? I'm trying to put it in a spot that you can see it. There you go, see that right there? There's just a little bit of wood coming off. I'm gonna knock that off. Um, but what you can do with your brown paper bags is put those down. You can put down a garbage bag. Any of that will be fine. Do it outside. Okay. So I'm just wiping it down with a paper towel. If you have like a, they, they have those tech cloths that are like cheesecloth with sticky stuff all over it. I mean, you know, would that be better? Maybe. Do you need it? No. Um... You can blow it, blow the uh, dust off with a, um, Heather Ott, how are you? Um, you could blow the extra dust off with just a blow dryer, but I'm just wiping that off. Okay, so let me see if I can get, oh, I am using a paperback. So uh, my aunt is talking about my grandmother. We called her May Mama. She, when we made cookies and stuff, we always, we didn't have cookie racks. We it was a very big process to open up every paper bag and lay it out on the table. I'm sure you guys have those same crazy memories. Okay, I'm going right into the stain. I'm gonna show you how I would use it out of this pot. Now, depending on the stain you've got, uh, we're getting some, uh, Minwax has been changing their formula. Um, I, 
I have to do a little bit more research on that so that I can explain maybe why, uh, but it's fine. I find that the newer colors, so this navy blue is a newer color, our vintage blue and the bay blue, those are the three new colors that we've gotten um, using it so far. It's a little, uh, I would say it's a, a little paint-like is maybe the best way to explain it. So a lot of times stain will be uh, super loose and I don't, I don't have anything in any reachable space to show you, but it would be a little looser. So I'm gonna show you as I pour this, you can see how it, see how it's a little thicker? It is still stained. And what that means is it's still gonna penetrate into the grain of the wood, but it's just a different formula. And so when you read the instructions on this one versus the other one, this is going to add color significantly faster. Now, you won't know, but like I said, the three colors are um, bay blue, vintage blue, and this navy blue. I like blue. <laughs> um, they were three colors that we just couldn't get in the last line. And so I was I grabbed them as soon as I saw it. So what I'm doing is I'm actually just putting the paint on. Paint, stain, I'm putting stain on. I like to, to use this part of the brush, the flat part. I don't use this part for this technique. I find that you can control the uh, stain better. See how I can put my fingers right on top of the brush and give it a push? You really wanna get that stain into your wood grain. I'm gonna go ahead and pop this up. I'm still using the same amount of stain that I put first. I haven't gone back for any more, right? Get my edges. Sometimes the edges, because of how they're cut, they don't take stain quite as well. So just kind of work it back and forth. Super easy. Now this is starting to dry out. I can feel it. So what I'm gonna do is now I'm gonna put some stain down here, do this part and then work the other edges. And if you can see the cup, I have been, I'm barely not even at the half mark yet. And it wasn't all the way full. And that's probably way too much stain. You can see, <laughs> you know, you're not gonna hurt anything because you're gonna wipe it off. If you get a little heavy handed like I just did, just make sure it's even across the whole board. Okay, that's a lot of stain. I, I went a little heavy, but that's all right. And then I'm gonna tip this up. Notice I don't even have any gloves on. And I'm just gonna go down this edge. I think because my brush is super wet right now, I'm gonna hit this one again because it was feeling really dry. I, can you see how wet that is? Like that is too much stain, but that's okay. So like I mentioned before, in the shop we would use, we used to tell you wait three to five minutes and then you wipe it off and then you can blow it dry. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one now because this one is more like 60 seconds and I just put a boatload of stain on here. Now, when you're doing the stain, um, think about this. Uh, if, you know, with stain, you're supposed to see the grain of the wood, right? One of the things I find people will do is they'll put it super thick like this and then dry it in. Don't do that because it gets super sticky, doesn't really dry very well, it doesn't cure very well. And then we've got to put a stencil on, pull it off, blow things dry. We've got to do some more steps. And if you're doing all that, it starts to rip the wood and it rips it in sheets. So you've got to wipe your stain off. See how I see the grain again? That's what you want with a stain. And you can tell that I put way too much on because I'm, I'm getting a lot off, but I mean, you can't hurt it. I'm just gonna pile my paper towels up. We are beyond the uh, wonderful bounty paper towels. <laughs> We've not been able to find them. So we are making do with some less than ideal paper towels. So I may need several, <laughs> several versions. But that's looking good. It's pulling a lot of the navy color. I'm still getting to see the grain. That's what I want. 
I'm mostly going with the grain of the wood. Every now and then I'll do a little circle, but I'm just trying to make sure. And then right here, there's a, um, in the, where the boards touch, there's a little um, crack, which I'm totally fine with. I just got a little excess paint down there or stain. And so I'm just making sure that I get the excess out. Hey, Tra oh, look, Tracy, the shirt. Thank you for the cute shirt comment. I was supposed to do this at home and um, I didn't make it back home. I was gonna throw, I was literally gonna throw my jammies on and do this with you guys, but that didn't happen. So I just stayed. Okay, so I have wiped this really well. I'm gonna do it one more time. I'm not worried about the edges as much. I'll kind of do a last minute wipe down on those. There's a little um, crevice spot here. And see how there's very little coming off now? That's what I want. Yeah, this is gonna be, yeah, I like the navy. We had a color consultation earlier. We were gonna do brown, but we decided that we're working her towards a little pops of navy in her, living in her den. So we thought this would be cute. She's putting it on her mantle. All right. So now I'm just doing a fast wipe. I'm less worried about these edges I just don't want them to look weird and dark. Okay. And you guys, I'm used to doing fast crafts, so this one's going to be a little bit longer than my normal. So I start saying silly stuff. Just, you know, interrupt me. Talk amongst yourselves. Oh, oh Iris, is this your room color? I love this blue. Oh, hey, Rayanne. This is, um, it's officially called paint stain now. <laughs> I know, paint stain. Um, this is our new, our new stain. The navy is definitely a color we've been lacking. Okay, so I'm going to blow this dry in just a second. So everybody go grab a glass of wine or something. I'll chat for a little bit. But one thing I want to point out, I'm not going to worry about it now. But these brushes, if you come in the shop, you know we use these forever. Uh, so you want to catch these while they're wet. You go rinse this out, rinse it out until it stops running color, and then just set it out to dry. This will last you for a good long time. Um, I'm going to put the hair dryer on though for just a second, okay? Because we have, we're going to move right into putting a stencil on and I need this dry. So I'm going to have a little cup of coffee and we'll see how loud this gets. When you do your blow dryer, I'm gonna see if you can hear me. Can you hear me when I talk over the hair dryer? Somebody give me a little uh, thumbs up. Oh, hey Sarah. Yes, Sarah, this is the stain. Okay, I got some thumbs up. So you can hear me. When you do your blow dryer, uh, it is the heat that's drying the stain, not the air. So don't hit your pull button. It's going to take forever, okay? You're going to do the heat, but also if you put this straight like this really close, the air is going to pop back up in the dryer and your dryer will turn off. It doesn't mean it's broken. It just got overheated, okay? Yeah, thanks, Cynthia. I love the navy. I'm gonna dry this all the way, you guys, which is not my normal, but I'm moving right into putting a stencil on it, and it has to be dry. Oh, wait, while we're doing this, because this is kind of boring, I'm gonna try to, I'm blowing here, hold on, hold on. I'm blowing paper towels off the table. Put them on the floor. Okay, I have a new thing coming always have anything coming because that's the fun part for me. Is that solid or semi-transparent stain? It is uh, semi-transparent because I don't want it solid. I want to I want to see the grain. Um, I've been working for a little bit on making cute little gift basket bucket thingies. Hold on, I'm going to turn this off for a second so I can show you. I do not have these ready yet, but I put it right here so that I can sneak peek and show you. So Thursday is your delivery day. What time should I expect you? Hmm. Idaho's far. Look, you guys. I'm making buckets. Okay. 
So this is coming, um, but look, I had to, look, I burned the wackadoodle out of that. I put a hole in it. So I'm clearly new to doing this blow dryer kind of gift package thing. But this one is, this is a zoo in a bucket. That's all I'm going to say. It's a zoo in a bucket. Okay. I'm going to go back to drying. I'm working on um, themed buckets. I know I need my sidekick so she can run her mouth. Barbara Joy, in this here. Uh, the buckets are going to be themed. Like we're going to have a wine bucket. We're going to have a coffee bucket. But the concept is, and we'll keep those around. These are going to be more permanent things. But the idea is that, um, what about, you know, somebody who's going to have a birthday? That sort of thing. All right, I'm getting close. So how do you, let's see, if you have a heat gun, I wouldn't use a heat gun for uh, drying your stain. I think it will uh, warp the wood. I think it's going to be too hot. I just go with the hair dryer, okay? Um, and you can go in high on your hair dryer, but I, I, the heat gun's going to, um, it's going to warp your wood a little bit. It might even char it, which might look cool, but maybe not what you intend. Um, we get the question all the time, how do you know that your stain is dry? So the trick is, um, things we really say. One, do I offer gift certificates? We do. We have gift certificates in the shop that you can pick up. Um, and I, I'll, I can add it to a delivery. Um, they're not on the store. I guess I should do that. Maybe I should put gift certificates on the store. I haven't done that. Oh, there's two Churchland truckers watching. We're going to be using Western Branch Bruins colors today for those church instructors that are watching. I don't think it was intentional, but that's what happened. Okay, so how do you know that it's dry? Ooh, it's a little warm because I was going heavy with the heat. Uh, two, two ways you know that it's dry. One, if it's cool to the touch, when you put your not hot hand on it, your normal temperature hand, and it feels cool, it's wet. Okay, in your mind, you need to think that's wet. Even if we're wrong, it's better to be wrong and keep drying, okay? Um, what I'm waiting for this to do is cool down a little bit because I got it really hot. Then the next option that you can test to see if, Maury High Blue, if it's um, dry is, I want you to put your hands on it, leave them for a few seconds, maybe a minute, if you lift and it feels tacky at all, and mine did, it's still a little wet, okay? So right about here, I had a little bit of tackiness. Your birthday, yeah, just let your, yeah, let your, yeah, your family needs to get you some gift certificates. Carissa, I'll bring you some good stuff. Yeah, we're going to do delivery tomorrow. Um, we don't have that many orders tomorrow, which is, it's, Pretty good. It's gonna be a rough day, but we're gonna do it. I got nothing else to do. I'm gonna come out and see you guys. Okay. Don't do this sticky hand thing while it's hot because I think that defeats the purpose. I'm just gonna let this cool down. Do the um wait, the Great British Baking Show. We need to waffle our cakes. <laughs> because you're spending too much of your own Actually, this is working, y'all. I can feel it. It's cooling off. Okay. Okay, we're good. Put your hands down. No stick. All right. Uh, if you have, you're not in a rush and you just want to be extra, extra sure, uh, do everything that we've just done. And once you get to this point, wait till the next day. You can let it dry overnight. You don't have to if you do the blow dryer, um, but you can. Okay. So now we're going to learn how to put on big stencils. All right. So it took us a while to figure out a process that we could replicate without causing a lot of stress. 
So you could uh, pull this off like a sticker and stick it down. But I find personally that the odds of me getting this centered when I do that is like zero, right? Zero. So we've come up with a process. Um, let me talk about the stencil real quick for a second. So your stencil has three layers when we send it to you. If you get your stencils elsewhere, if they come with transfer tape, it's gonna be the same thing. Your transfer tape might be um, translucent, no, op opaque. You might not be able to see through it or it might look white and cloudy, right? Kind of like paper, hey Lauren. Um, but it's still transfer tape, so don't worry about that. Ours is just clear. So we've got a white paper backing We've got the black stencil, and people ask, um, I use, um, oh, there you go, Oracle 631, which is something that people normally don't make stencils out of. Uh, normally there is something, there, there's a stencil number, I think it's 813 or something like that, that people do stencils. It's blue. A lot of times you see the stencils, this is like a light blue. I don't prefer that. I find that uh, I don't get as good of a clean stencil job when we use that. So we've tried a couple of things. We've even tried the 651, which is glossy. Uh, this is a matte version. Uh, we don't like that either. So we just keep doing this. I can buy bulk in black and white. We tried white. I can't see the stencil. <laughs> so that's where we landed. So Here's how you're going to put on your stencil. Um, I'm trying to think of the easiest way for me to do this. Let me do a little bit of moving. You gotta think about what's comfortable for you. I want you to do what I'm doing. Move things around, get them where you want them, right? So I'm gonna do it this way. I'm gonna do it this way. I have to remember I'm on Facebook. Okay. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna line it up. Here's your paint tape. If you have real paint tape at home, use your real paint tape. I think this is gonna be fine. We're gonna test it tonight. If this fails miserably, um, I'd recommend masking tape, scotch tape. That would probably work too. So what you're gonna do is I want you to line it up. If you need to cut this white part to where it's exactly to this black part, do that. That's definitely up to you. What you're centering when you're centering this stencil is the black part. I have centered the stencil part, the name part, inside the black rectangle, okay? Well, be careful with it. Hey, no threats, no threats. Um, so sometimes it's hard to see, because I just cut this really fast, when it, your eye's gonna pull itself towards this crazy white line. So just cut it off. Okay, don't change the shape of the black stencil though, okay? And then you're just gonna line it up. I am an eyeballer. If you feel the need to get out a ruler, do that. That's totally fine. If I'm off when I'm doing this, don't tell me. Okay, feeling pretty pretty good about that. All I'm doing is just eyeballing. I'm trying to make sure this is straight, this is straight, and that the space is here and here and here and here are about the same, okay? Now, if you've got a friend at home, now's a great time to grab a friend. Uh, Princess Barbara Joy can help me, but she's not here. Uh, and put something down on, uh, have them hold this down. I'm gonna grab a big old thing of glitter paint and just hold that down. Then I'm gonna take my weird paint tape and I'm going to tape down one side. I want to make sure it's flat, okay? There's enough on here for two of these. I guess it worked, which is good. Go all the way across the end. Don't fold that down the edge. Just want to, I find it's easier if it's all the way on there. And then just for fun, I'm going to stick this kind of right there okay and I want you to rub that down really good if you've got a credit card or um, some people do Cricut stuff at home we use these uh, squeegees in the shop rub it down okay and you may be asking me why am I rubbing the paint tape so hard it is the paint tape 
that is your saving grace when we do this process. If it's off just a little bit, Lauren says it makes it unique. This is a one of kind, one of a kind, y'all. Hey, Shirley. Oh, thanks, Sue. Yeah, don't tell me if it's off. I don't want to know. Okay. So now here, here comes the magic. You ready? Let's see if I can line this up. I'm teaching my secrets now. Okay. The trick is this. If this tape moves, you have to stop. You have to start all over again, okay? Don't be pulling the stencil off and the sticker off when this is bouncing everywhere. You have to have this down. This is what's going to put it right back where you want it. I keep rubbing that up. All right, so the first thing I want you to do is I want you to lift this up now, and I want you to carefully fold it right on that crease and fold it down, okay? So I'm going to see if I can put the end of that a little bit closer to you guys. Oh, that is right in your face, isn't it? Okay, see how I've got that? The tape is even folded back right here, right? I want you to fold that crease. And notice how it's still staying right there. Thank goodness. That tape is what's going to lay everything back down where we want it, all right? So then you're going to pull this up. Now, one of the things I did when I put your transfer tape on was I rubbed it really hard with our squeegee. But I want you to be careful with this process because it's possible that some of these pieces here will stay stuck to the paper. And that's not what you want to happen. You want these pieces to stay stuck to the contact paper. Okay? So just watch for that. Oh. Oh. See, I can't really see this. Okay. So see how that's stuck? Let me get this where I can see it and you can see it and we don't cause damage. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this back down and stick it onto the contact paper. Super simple. And I'm watching this tape because I just saw this tape come back up. So sticking that down, okay? And just be careful with it. And don't panic. Sounds like it's harder than it is, it's not. If you pull and it pulls a little bit, kind of pull it from another angle and it'll pull right off, okay? So now I've got this laying right like this. All I'm gonna do, <laughs> this is a game changer. I know, this took me way too long to figure this out. I'm gonna lift it and I'm gonna slide it back on. We've done the, this kind of technique on like huge, like 24 inches, 12 by 24s, like it totally works. If you need to get a second person, have them hold this stencil up for you. I've been doing this a while, so I'm okay. I'm just gonna hold this up. And now the trick is you wanna make sure that you lay this down so that the stencil goes back in its position. But think of it this way. I'm putting the tape back where the tape was when it was flat. So if you, I'm gonna turn this actually. Y'all can see that side now, right? So I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna push right in the center here. Right? I had a little movement on this and so I'm just gonna lift that. I don't really want that to stick yet. I know this landed perfectly. And then all you have to do is that, once you get it down. Ta-da! It is really this tape. You just gotta make sure that tape gets back down where you want it. Now when you get it like this, carefully remove your paint tape. You can save this if you want. Um, I'm gonna show you how you can also use your contact paper. We're gonna wanna protect the edges around the stencil. But go ahead and save this unless you have your own paint tape. Yeah, I rubbed that one pretty good. Just kinda of hold it down because we haven't really rubbed that stencil down yet. And if you did all of that, and let's say you kinda of got halfway going and it felt like it was going crooked, just stop, pull it back up, okay? Bam. All right, so now what you wanna do, credit card is probably my recommendation, like your insurance card if it's heavy, something like that. And what you're doing is rubbing this so that the black part, which is the sticker, sticks to your wood. And if you can see, when I do this, the table shakes. 
I'm giving it a pretty good rub because what's gonna happen next is I'm gonna take that contact paper off and the relationship between the contact paper and the vinyl, the vinyl is gonna wanna come up with the contact paper and we don't want that. Now, while I'm thinking about it, never blow dry your vinyl, okay? Unless you're doing glass. Do not blow dry vinyl on wood because it will uh, stick really hard. Now, I wanna show you one thing. I've got wrinkles in my contact paper. That doesn't matter because that's coming off, okay? The other thing, I, if this is yours, it's done, it's waiting for you, but I, I stole it because I put the contact paper on a little crooked, and so what I did is I went back and put a little piece of pink tape on the bottom as um, an extender of the contact paper, okay? So just that needs to stay on if you've got one of those and function like your contact paper, okay? So super simple. Now that I've got that rubbed on, all I'm gonna do is pull this off if you cannot keep the contact paper, that's no big deal, but I'm gonna show you how you can use it to protect the edges of your wood. Now here's my trick for pulling off the contact paper. It's gonna, you gotta get it started, right? There's no real trick for that, just patience. But then what I want you to do is I want you to keep this flat to the board, okay? Don't pull it like this. If you pull it like this, um, there's physics involved that I don't understand or want to understand really. But if you pull like this, the vinyl comes up with it. If you pull it flat like this, and I'm gonna use my um, waist, and I'm just gonna pull this gently to me. It's got a lot of tension. But because I'm pulling it flat, the vinyl is staying down. And when you hit a big section like that, because there's no vinyl and it's not sticking to the wood as hard, it jumps a little, but don't let it throw you off. I'm kind of watching while I'm doing this too to make sure I'm not pulling anything up or ripping the black vinyl. Ta -da! Okay, I'm gonna set this aside because I'm gonna use that in a second. All right, so now all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my hand and make sure there's no real bubbles. If by accident you say rip a piece, let's say I pulled, uh, I pulled this center of this B up and it ripped the vinyl. All you have to do is take a little piece of paint tape, masking tape, uh, you could take some of the contact paper, that would work too. And you can cover any part of the rip that happened when, uh, with that, and that'll protect you for your stencil. Okay, so don't worry about that if it happens. It happens to the best of us. Okay, so now that I've got that, let me show you. So that's on there like that. And now what I wanna do, and I've been stenciling forever, I'm still gonna protect my edges because I know for sure that I'm gonna make a mess. So what I'm gonna do is find my scissors. Oh, there we go. And I'm gonna use this contact paper. Normally in the shop, we would just use more paint tape, but as you could see, paint tape was a weird thing for me to figure out. All I'm doing is I'm gonna put this down so it doesn't cover where I wanna stencil, but it does cover the wood because I don't want to make a mess. It's not gonna be as sticky as like fresh paint tape, so be a little careful with it, but it's it works. It's gonna get you going. It definitely wants to stick to itself. Make sure you're not covering your stencil where you're gonna actually be stenciling, but make sure you're overlapping with the edges. I'll show you in a second. So that when we do our stenciling, if we accidentally don't hit right in the middle, it's not gonna be a problem. Okay, almost. All right, everybody tell me where you're from. 
Oh, yeah. Thanks, Holly. We have um, learned every failed <laughs> uh, issue with stencil application. Trust me. We've been through it all. I think that um, I have a lot of people when we have people come in and do things in the shop and people are always, I think people, I've had people comment, yay, Chesapeake, um, that they think that we make things for them. Like they're in here just, I don't know, having a drink and we're doing their projects for them. And if you've been in here, you know better. Um, I just think we're pretty good at turning a process around so that people can execute. So, all right. So let me show you real quick, up close. I have my stencil on. That's probably good. It's a little shiny, but that'll show you that I've covered every section on the side, okay? Oh, hey, Robin. Oh, Tampa, Florida. Oh, tell Miss Adelina I said hey. Roxana's daughter loves to watch. Hey, Elizabeth, Hampton, Norfolk. I need the instruction. Yes, yes, yours is coming. Adeline is uh, 18 months and uh, likes DIY lives. <laughs> so we have to give her a shout out every time. Okay, stencil class, all right? Uh, let me see. Somebody tell me what time it is so that I can um, kind of keep track of things and not be here all night for you. So we've got gold and white. And one of the things about metallic, metallic is, she's on the iPad, metallic is very transparent. It's not an opaque color, much like yellow, orange, that sort of thing. Uh, if you're going to do a yellow or an orange or that kind of thing, you could put a color under it. 748. Thanks, Holly. Um, so for example, I might, if I had a yellow, put a white under it. I might, if I was doing an orange, funny enough, I might put a light gray under it because I may not want to brighten the orange, but I also don't want it to be transparent. So you can do some of those things, or you just know that it's gonna be a little transparent, and that's the look that you're gonna go for. So for this one, that's the look I want with the gold. I'm gonna do the BB in gold, and then I'll do the names in white. So when you stencil, I'm gonna use this paper here as a, uh, like a paint palette. You could use a paper towel. I wouldn't use a paper towel, don't use a paper towel. Use a paper plate. I'm actually going to rip part of this box off. I'm going to use that because this is not porous and it's not going to have this stuff go in. Addison watching. Oh, hey, Addison. Yeah, you can't rest. You, I know you can't rest perfection, but I don't want y'all to have to stare at this mug all night. Okay, so again, plenty of paint. This is easily four times what you need, but I don't want you at home making signs for mom and getting stuck. So here's how you're gonna do this, which is weird because you're dipping into the cup. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna teach you like we do in the shop. So if you come in the shop and we do a workshop, we don't do, uh, we don't do instruction like this. So when we do our DIY workshops, when we're open normally, we literally will give you tools and set you free. And <laughs> we can not tell you anything if you don't want it. But if you get stuck, we'll watch you. And if you get to the point where you're stenciling or something, we do direct one-on-one uh, -on -one tutorials. So we'll grab like four or five people together. So I'm gonna give you the same tutorial. So we use makeup sponges when we do our stenciling. Uh, we have seen where people will use the, uh, the wooden, these smaller versions of these. I find that you, uh, you can't control the pressure as well, and that's where you end up with a lot of bleeding. So I do like these the best. We've tried a lot of things. Uh, when you do it, uh, if you care about your nails, grab some gloves or something, because this is gonna get messy, but I don't worry about, I don't, I don't worry about that. <laughs> um, so I want you to grab your sponge right about here, about a quarter of an inch up, and I want you to squeeze it like that. Okay, what I'm trying to do is round the head of the sponge because this is a big old flat rectangle, right? You want to round the head of the sponge so that when you're stenciling, you don't end up with a whole series of rectangles, okay? That's how you prevent that. So then you're going to dip it in and I'm just kind of getting a good glob on there. And then I want you to get onto your, kind of make sure you can see it onto your paper and I want you to smush it into your sponge. Smush it way into your sponge. 
I'm shaking the table. That's how hard. But there you go. See how far up that sponge I got? Pushed it way in there, okay? Now, here's our trick. Well, it's not really our trick. It's just a trick. You've got to have a paper towel or a napkin. You never, even though I feel pretty good about how much paint is in this, I will never go straight from doing this uh, action here to stenciling right on my board, all right? You want to dab off on your paper towel first. You should be able to lightly touch your hand and get no paint on it. I don't want a ton of paint on the edge of this because what happens is it's gonna go bloop and it's gonna go all under your stencil. Even with a vinyl stencil, you can bleed, right? It can go, uh, this is not a perfectly flat surface with wood, it's got a uh, grain to it. So you wanna make sure it's super light. I would suggest practicing like, let's see if I can show you on here, like practicing. Make sure that you don't have a lot. I'm gonna have to do two coats of this. I already know that because it's gonna be transparent. But just make sure you don't see a lot when you first do it, okay? That's gonna be the trick. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is make sure that you are just doing a light dabbing motion. I don't want you to shake the table too hard. I am gonna shake it a little bit because the camera's up there and I know it's gonna happen. And I think I got a little excessive with my wiping off. The metallic is extremely transparent. And all you're gonna do is dab. The trick with doing something like this, and I think I, yeah, I think I pulled most of my color out. I'm gonna do it again. The trick with doing this is thin layers. If it takes you five coats, do five coats, right? It is much easier to take your time doing the, the coverage the first time then to try to, that's better, try to clean it up afterwards. Now, I'll walk you through some cleanup techniques after we do this. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that better, right? Yeah. Um, you should not hear that. Don't be pouncing on the wood like that. You don't need to do that. Just super soft, spongy motion. If you're doing big designs, your hand's gonna hurt. And you'll notice when you start running out of paint because what starts to happen is it actually starts pulling it back off. So I'm gonna dip back in again, smoosh, and then dab off. That's always the motion. And then just go in again. And I'm gonna go, you're gonna get a better coverage faster if you did two thin coats than if you tried to do one thick coat. You know, that applies to like wall painting, that applies to stain, that kind of applies to everything. That applies to makeup. <laughs> so thin coats layered on and you'll get a better result. And I just keep going, same motion. This one's gonna, I don't have like the Rachel Ray thing where I've got the uh, half cooked cake in the oven. Oh, speaking of, so speaking of cakes, so we are still doing our fox hunt. We're gonna do it till we run out of foxes. We had a little miscommunication on the number of foxes we had hence needed, so hence the foxes. Uh, but we are still doing the fox hunt. If you don't know what that is, we have, right now we've got two. Uh, we're getting ready to add another one this weekend. We have partnered up with a couple of our local businesses uh, micro small businesses like we are just trying to get folks out and learn new businesses that sort of thing and we created these cute little kits basically it's just fox in a bag and we have a contest going on if you go purchase something from them and you tell them you're on a fox hunt you get a fox go home you paint it and post it and then tag us tag us of course tag them and their good food and then uh, type in the hashtag Fox Hunt. We are doing a weekly drawing starting this weekend and we're gonna be giving away a 25% off a coupon that you can use for takeout, you can use for um, a takeout project or you can hold it and you can use it when we open back up. So all of that is coming. Right now we've got two places that we're doing a fox hunt at. One is, the first one that we did was 
a small smokehouse and um, oysters. They do barbecue, they do all kinds of different things in there and they are doing curbside takeout. They are um, right up in Norfolk on, in Ghent, um, right off Collie. So they're real close to us and they're doing the fox hunt. And the second place that we're doing it right now is Jen's Pound Cake. She is right over here off of, in the Palace Shops off of 21st Street in Norfolk. So walking distance from us really. And she's doing it. So go in there, grab yourself a pound cake and you can get yourself a fox. So that's coming. Okay. So you just keep doing, I know this is weird to watch me stencil. Is it weird to watch me stencil? <laughs> I don't know. It's weird for me to feel like I'm stenciling for you. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. So now that I've gotten to this edge, I've got a good thin coat. I'm gonna start right back on this side. And what you're gonna see very quickly, paint sticks to paint really well. And I should only need two coats to get the coverage that I'm looking for. I don't, I really want the kids' names to stand out more than this word. So I'm gonna be uh, not going too crazy with this. Yeah, see, it really goes on that good second coat. Now, when you're stenciling, here's one thing that people, I find that people have a hard time seeing. If you're stenciling and let's say you're doing a um, white, for example, it may look not totally solid, like you put it on with a big old paintbrush, right? Well, that's kind of the look you're going for with stenciling, but I find that one of the things that's a little bit hard to really visualize is exactly how covered this is. So it's possible to cheat. When we're in the shop, we've got an entire wall of reusable stencils. It's easier to lift a reusable stencil and kind of cheat and take a peek. But you can gently lift up the corner of your vinyl. Just make sure you put it back down really good and get a sense for how the coverage if you're worried about that. So when you go to pull it off, you can just be careful and if it doesn't look like it's thick enough for you, go ahead and do another coat. But I find that it's generally significantly more coverage than you think it is. It's a little hard to tell when it's in a stencil. So see the difference? The first, the first B has two coats. The second B has one coat. So huge difference, right? So I'm gonna put my second coat on these and I'm just still using the same old sponge. The, the longer you stencil, the more you can get a feel for how saturated the sponge is. Sometimes when it gets overly saturated and you get tired, because it's a lot of work to do big stencils, you might get a little bit heavy handed and when you've got a little excess paint in it, heavy handed and excess paint equals bleeding. So just stay vigilant. Okay. And one more. And I still have over half of this gold left. So the kiddos could have fun with a bunch of your paint. And I also find kids stencil really well. So you could get them involved. Um, they have a light touch, much lighter than us big old adults. And their hands are little. Okay. So that's all I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna go for a third coat because the look I'm going for is a more soft look, but you could. You could. I'm, what I'm doing now is just looking for a little fair spots. The metallic in my LED lights is pretty good. I can mostly see. Okay, 
All right, so that's all I'm gonna do. I'm gonna light my fingers real quick. You don't wanna drag this paint everywhere. So now here's the other trick I want you to do. Do not let this dry with the stencil on, okay? That's trick number, tip number 52. I should keep count. You're gonna pull it right away. You wanna pull it while your paint is wet. Think about this like uh, pulling a Band-Aid off and like a scab. It's kind of gross. But if your scab is dry and you pull it, it's gonna possibly rip things. And what'll happen is the paint on the wood and the paint on the stencil will become one dry piece of paint. And then when you pull it and you're pulling the vinyl, the paint on the vinyl will hold on to the paint on the wood. Okay, so it's all gonna come up. So you need to pull it when it's wet and you can just pull it. I always say rip it like a Band-Aid. So I'm just gonna pull all this off, stick it to the table. Now, one of the things that we have in here that you don't have at home is a pick to get into the center parts of your stencil. And I'll explain that in just a second. Notice how I'm just ripping it. I'm not too concerned about get a hold of it. I think it did an okay job. Okay, so I got the easy parts out, right? But now I have these, right? And they're in there. One of the things that we have in the shop is um, we use dental picks. Okay, you can use a toothpick. You can use a dental pick if you have one at home. Uh, maybe a thin piece of wire, that would work too. All you're gonna do, and you still wanna do this when it's wet, so I want you to be careful. You're going to, uh, <laughs> you're going to stick your, just pull it up just a little bit so that you can grab it and just pull. And that's it. Ideally, you don't scratch your paint when you do this, your stain or your stencil paint. If it happens, I'll show you some techniques to fix things that could happen. Just take your time with it. All right. Now, I'm gonna let this dry. I could blow it dry, that would work. And I may have to when we get back to it, but I'm gonna move on to the names and I'm gonna let this dry on its own, but I want you to just see. Oh, safety pin, thanks Holly, that's another good one. So see how much brighter this looked now with the stencil off than it did with it on. So just remember that, especially if you're doing white, uh, white will tend to look like it's mottled or it's not an even coat. And especially if you like a rustic look, you'd be really surprised that even when it's mottled like that, it looks really cute. All right, so safety pin, toothpick, little old piece of wire, oh, earring, right? That would totally, anything that can get up under that edge, all right? I'm gonna set this aside, but a couple of things that you can do if this messes up. Uh, here's my first overall tip. If you have a ton of bleeding, uh, you could do a couple of things. One, you could uh, take a detailed brush and you could work around those edges and you could clean those up. That, that's, that's the real heavy handed way to do it. What we generally recommend in the shop when it gets bleedy and, and the edges aren't crisp is we say uh, it's time to like a rustic look. <laughs> so if you, let's say you have little blobs and stuff, sometimes you'll get little blobs and like thin little um, wicking of the paint, then you're gonna dry it first. Don't do, in, in my mind, unless it's just a little bit, you could try a baby wipe and wiping an edge of something if it's like a little piece of something, that would work. If it's a lot more than that, we generally say just dry the whole thing and then you're gonna take a piece of sandpaper to it. 
any blobs or heavy goopy things of paint, they're gonna be the first things that get hit with the sandpaper. And that generally tends to knock them off in a way that it's okay. Um, if it doesn't get everything that you want, then my advice is to sand the crap out of it. Oh, that's a technical term. But ultimately, that's how you get to a rustic look, right? You knock some of the edges off. You may even, uh, I'll even show you on this one. So this one here is probably more, uh, lends itself more to a more rustic look. And you can even see, let me show you real close up. Let me see if I can get the camera to see it. So see how my paint job's not solid on this one? I kind of did that on purpose, but I'm, I'm gonna show you this right here. So look right here, it's totally solid apart. Let's say I had a big blob there. Uh, I was trying to see if I had a big blob. I don't really have a big blob, but you could just very simply knock some of the paint off in different sections and I'm doing it on purpose, and the grain will pick up different things, and it starts to look super cool, right? And so then you just say, you meant to do that, you sand the crap out of it, and it looks exactly like you meant it to be, and you're all good. So that's our biggest stencil tips, but if you want a clean look, the biggest tip is take your time. Um, if it takes you, I am a three coat stencil, stenciler generally. I'm generally always doing three coats. This one's a little bit lighter because I wanted it that way. If you're doing white on black, sometimes that can even take five coats, okay? All right, I've set that aside to dry. Now we're gonna move on to our names. When you get these, they're gonna smell like fire when you open them up because we cut them on a laser. And I purposefully did not use wood for these names. These are actually gonna be cut in your kits out of MDF or pressed wood board. Um, they all still have the centers in them, but they come right out. And the reason that I did that, you know, wood is, uh, can warp. And I wanted to make sure that when you got these, they were gonna stay straight across the thing. You could use a toothpick for this part. I'm just knocking all the centers out of the letters. Now, because we used MDF and not wood, this product has tape on both sides. That's, that's key. Now you can, if you like this look, if you see them, the tape is burned, right? So it really does look like wood. And we've had people put these on just like this with the tape on both sides. It is absolutely fine to do that, but they actually have tape and it's meant to be taken off. And I probably should have done this part before I got us on here. So I think for the purposes of this video, I will not do all of them. But if you see the difference, you even have two R's sort of together. So this is with the paper on, and this is with the paper off. So see how it looks like MDF pressed board? And that's kind of the look that um, I was hoping to give you. It gives you a real, and it's thicker. It uh, gives you a very substantial raised look, and that's what I wanted you to have. Uh, let's see, I wanna get, I'm gonna start with, there's three kids' names in here. Uh, Oscar, Victoria, and Alex. And I just wanna make sure, I'm gonna start with Victoria's in the middle. Cause she's the middle. All right. And I really don't want you to watch me do this the whole time. So I will, I'm gonna show you how to paint them. And then we'll dry it and just kind of set it on there so you can see it. So when you paint these, we've got white for this one and you've got another sponge. Okay, you're gonna do the same technique. I'm gonna rip another piece of this off and use that. Kind of move my gold. I am gonna get another paper towel. I do a very similar stenciling motion. And the one thing you have to think about with these is do you want the edge to still look burned and black? Okay, see how it's really dark? If you 
you can paint over that and make the whole letter white so that it looks white against the, the blue, or you can leave that dark. That's really just a choice. I'm gonna leave it dark, uh, mostly because I don't wanna make you suffer <laughs> through all of that. And I'm gonna do the same technique. I'm just gonna dip in, and if this sponge is too big for you, cut it in half. I'm gonna see how this one works. I'm gonna smush my paint in, and then I'm definitely gonna dab off. Now, here's the thing with these. When you do the sponge, I'm gonna actually show you on the popsicle stick. I think this will work. See how it goes down over the edges a little bit, even when I just barely touch it? So what can happen is you can get a very light hint of paint on this black part, and if you don't want that, it's kind of a pain, right? So have a baby wipe or a lightly damp paper towel right there, just in case. I'm gonna wing it tonight. And I'm actually gonna cut this down, I've decided. I'm just gonna cut it right up the middle. It's already got paint in it, that's fine. And then all I'm gonna do is dab, just like I do the stencil. So it's a lot smaller, and I'm just gonna go super light. I'm gonna do this in coats because I, I don't really want it to go down over the edge. And so I'm just gonna do some thin coats on each one and let it dry in between. But that already looks brighter, right? I don't even think that's one of the letters in her name. I'm just, I think that's Victoria. Uh, no, that goes in Oscars. Okay, and all you do, like I said, super light, just dab it. If you prefer and you have some at home, some detail brushes, like artist brushes, you could do that. People use those in the shop. I'm not that comfortable controlling an artist brush. And I'm very, I'm much more okay with a sponged over sponged look than I am with that I made a big blob look so I like the sponges and that's it that's really the end here right so we've gone through paint staining your board sign we've gone through hey Holly hit me with the time check uh, we have gone through uh, applying stencils and some things that you could uh, happen while you're doing that we have gone through stenciling, how to stencil. We have uh, also let this sit for a few minutes, but it hasn't dried enough that I'm gonna glue anything on. But I do just wanna show you, cause I'm not gonna let you sit through the whole thing of me peeling all of those letters apart, but I promised to post uh, the final. But I'll give you kind of a sneak peek. That's kind of how it's going to look. So see how the white pops off of the metallic? Let's see if I can turn that up. There we go. So that's going to look awesome when it's on there. And the letters are smaller. So if you've got uh, two kids, the letters will be probably taller. And if you've got like six kids, eight, ten. Thanks, girl. Uh, they're going to be smaller, but everybody, if you've already ordered one, you know this. I always send you a picture of the design before I cut it, so you're going to know what it's going to look like before you get it, okay? So if you're worried about that, don't. Uh, you'll see it. So how do you finish your sign? Let's talk about that real quick. Let's say when you finish this, let me use this one over here that's dry and show you a couple of things. So these, these were your two fonts. This is the Mackenzie font. This is the Jonathan font, right? So you can use both. Let me set this over here. Uh, you could do a couple of things. So let's say you're finished and um, you wanna put everything on. This is put on very simply. You've got a little pot of white glue, okay? If you are gonna put it outside or something and you have Gorilla Glue, you can use that, but I assumed these were going inside. So it's just, honestly, it's Elmer's glue and we use it all the time. If it oozes, it's got a matte clear finish versus say your Gorilla Glue that has a shiny finish or even your wood glue, which can have a yellow tinge to it, okay? So we like that. All you're gonna do is pull this up and we've given you a tiny little sponge. You're just gonna dip your sponge in, 
don't go crazy on the glue and then you literally just kind of sponge it on the back glue it down okay if you feel like it needs to be weighted because say your boards are a little bumpy uh, put uh, something uh, flat maybe first and then something heavy on top so it'll stay there but once you do that then you can think about a couple of things so on that blue sign I could do my edges in white or gold right I could do some pops of color so where I took the green that was on the name on this one and I popped the edges with a little bit of green so you could do some of that to give it something different you could continue your sanding and really uh, see if you can see this really get it rustic so see how I knocked all of that stain off of that corner right so you could do that super simple don't be uh, don't be chintzy with your sanding if you're gonna do it do it just get up in there but don't do the whole thing you got to find some spots and the, the concept is where do you think that it would wear right where where would it wear uh, if you were setting it on the ground or something obviously the edges I probably wouldn't sand these letters because they're not gonna be real wood but just kind of going through and then when I'm trying to add a little uh, texture like we did on the O I'm actually putting my finger into the sandpaper so that I can hit a specific spot right and just knocking some of that down. So this looks like it's been around. Now you notice that I'm always going left or right on this board. I mean, you really could go any direction. I do suggest going with the grain of the wood. Uh, you know, is anybody gonna sue you if you go all different directions? No. I find that if you start to do that, it looks less aged and more like plaster, kind of. So it just has a different effect. Not a bad effect, just different. And then one of the things that is happening, because I'm sanding white on black, is it will, you know, it'll kind of work its way onto that black. I want you to wipe it off with a dry something, cloth, paper towel. Uh, you don't want to do it with a baby wipe because wet plus dusty paint makes paint. And before you know it, you'll have white streaks of paint all over your piece. So just carefully wipe them off. You could blow it off with a blow dryer. That would work too. And that's it. So see how I've, I'm gonna hold it up there a little bit. I've just knocked the bottom edge off down here. I knocked a lot of paint right off up here. So it has a little bit more rustic look. So that's something that you can do at the edge, at the end. And then the last thing you do, so you're gonna let it dry you will glue your names on uh, i suggest when you glue your names on just very simply laying them out first where you want them and putting the glue on sticking them down it's it's not difficult but once you have that down you're going to let that dry until you can't move it uh, at least 30 minutes okay don't try to do anything crazy uh, i would wait till the next day to do the hanger like i, I wouldn't do the hanger on this one but i'm going to show you how to do the hanger so we've given you the uh, sawtooth hangers, okay? And what you're gonna do is you're gonna find a spot that's in the middle and I'm just gonna put it on this one, I'm not gonna measure. I do suggest measuring on this one. And you're gonna hold it where the sawtooths are down. And you need a hammer, obviously. And this one has uh, hammerable ends on either end. And you're just gonna tap it in. Yeah. Just be something fell. Just be careful with that. And I think what we're gonna do now that I'm seeing this design, we're gonna give you two of these because I think you need two. Look what's happening. It's going right there. So put it here. I'll make sure you have two. There you go and you just hammer it in if you've got like a wire at home that would work too command strips you could put two command strips or three on this it's not that heavy of a sign so command strips would work or you just lean it 
up on your fireplace. You don't have to put the hanger on it. Okay, I think I think I stayed within my hour and a half. That was much longer than I was uh, thinking that I was gonna pick, get people to stay. So thanks for staying. Um, I'm trying to think any questions that you have. You are more than welcome to message me. But I think we've covered everything. It's a fairly uh, simple process. I think the hardest part just might be doing the uh, little uh, stencil uh, application. Just take your time with that. It's no big deal. And remember, this is a present from you. It's a gift, it's a DIY, it's beautiful because you're making it yourself. And I think that's amazing. You're gonna get some really good results. Everybody making things have been amazing. Thanks, Andrea. Oh, girl, thank you. All right, I promise to finish peeling all of the letters. Uh, next time I do something with these, I'll pre-peel so that you don't have to watch me peel them. Uh, this does take a little bit, so it'd probably be a good 20 minutes. We don't wanna do that. And then I will apply the letters and then I will post it for you so that you actually can see to be or not to be okay somebody tell me that's clever okay anyway all right that's it uh, I am good I want you guys to go do our fox hunt go uh, get some barbecue at Smalls barbecue and I want you to go to Jen's pound cake buy some pound cake uh, I'm in the process of working with Jen we may be adding pound cake to our delivery because everybody needs DIY and dessert, right? So stay tuned for that, that's gonna be coming. Uh, and if you have any ideas, we're gonna keep them coming. I've got more coming and they're all in the pipeline. Uh, hey to the long cousins, yep. Oh, thanks Iris. And if you guys ever just wanna watch me do something crazy or want me to make something and do it on live, you just let me know, okay? I'm happy to do that. All right, I'm gonna save this, I'm gonna post it out so when you're doing your actual signs, you can follow back up and just message me with questions. Thanks for sticking it out with me, everybody. You guys have a good, safe night.